Hello guys, Axley here. So welcome to my personal guide for Grey Sword and Dagger build. This build is focused on mostly on dungeon stuff. So if you're killing dungeon bosses, this build is for you. So um, yeah, let's get into it. So just to clarify, my stats has been reset because I'm trying to switch to a uh, crossbow build now. So before I do that, but I can still give you guys uh, this. It's basically the same build really. So you want to go with 30 base decks. Uh, 9 uh, wisdom so you're gonna have 9 extra anyway and you want to go 30 base perception as well now let's get into the rotation all right so this is the list that i made so let's start with these stuff first so the mana region is going to be your row so rowing is where you get most of your mana back and it's very very important by the way so as you can see, if you can get it to blue, you get mana regen additional by 820. That is mega huge. So if you want to practice like very consistently, you want to stand right at where the tank is. You want to stand at the front. Uh, make sure you are always dodging the fury attack that is coming. So you get all your mana back. Because you're going you're gonna to be really lacking of mana during this build. So yeah. Now, for swappable skill, it's going to be the Ascension Slash. So, this skill right here. Ascension Slash. Yep. Now, this skill is very good because it almost matched the cooldown with uh, your Stunning Blow. So, every time you do your Stunning Blow, the big damage rotation, this skill is going to always be up. So... You you don't want to use this skill in your um well I guess you kind of could use it as a filler but it's better not to um but uh if you do unlock this new skill right here guillotine blade you want to replace ascension slash to, to uh, guillotine and this guillotine blade right here is extremely powerful so it's gonna be one of your best DPS skill that you can have as well so. Right now, you only have two best DPS skill, which is the Death Blow and the uh, Brutal Incision. This two skill hit the hardest in your setup. So you want to set up a way to... Well, I'll explain it to you later how you do it. So you want to set up a way to make this two skill hit the most. Now, the filler skills is going to be your Valiant Brawl. So this skill right here. This skill right here is going to be really good if you can get it to purple, you do significantly more damage. Um, yeah, and uh, this skill right here is basically the skill that you would spam a lot because of its low cooldown. Uh, I forgot the name, Predatory Strike. Um, obviously, if you can get it to blue, that's pretty much good enough. Um, if you can get it to purple, you do a lot, a lot more damage. Like, it's going to increase, like... 50% more base damage, so it's gonna be insane. And the cooldown is 5.2 seconds. So you can literally just keep spamming this skill over and over, like off cooldown as a filler. So this skill right here, Gaia Crush. Now, this skill is gonna be not that great because of long animation casting, but it is still a really good skill to do, like about maybe 3000 damage ish in total so it's still pretty good um you want to use this as your filler or you can also shove it in in your main rotation as well it will work just 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 as well now precision dash this skill allows your character to step to the front of the enemy so it's a it's a it's a you know mobility skill it's good uh it's a gap closer as i show here but if you get it to purple as you can see right there, um, if you use this skill, the next 3 seconds, you're going to have heavy attack chance by 160. So that is 16% chance. So how heavy attack chance works is um, you're going to do double damage. Basically, how it does is if you hit 2000 damage, it's going to become 4000. So that's how heavy attack chance works. I'll, I'll go through the rotation later. Anyway, so if you only have blue on this skill, then you might... Don't, you're just gonna make it as your gap closer skill. But if you do have purple epic, then you can put it into your main rotation. Now, let us go into the main rotation. 
So the main rotation is you want to go in. So you want to backstab. This is the backstab skill right here. Shadow strike. You want to get in, get close or or just walk to the front, I guess. Then you want to you if you have purple on this skill, the healing skill that you have, which is this one, the Vinci Courage. If you do have it on epic, you can actually use this first. So you get 15% attack speed for 12 seconds. And also your teammate also get it too. So which is pretty cool. And then you want to use a wheel breaker. Which is this skill. Now this skill you can, you can probably just leave it as level 1. And level 1 will still be fine. But the higher the level the more damage you're going to do. So this skill basically um, lowers the enemy's uh, defense by six for 6 seconds. So it will help out your teammate as well. Which is very very good. Um... And then you want to go with the stun skill, which is uh, this, uh, what was the skill name? Stunning Blow. Stunning Blow is okay, you can leave it at blue and it still be fine. It's pretty, it's pretty good anyway. Um, you don't really have to get this to purple. Uh, then you want to go with, uh, if you have purple, like at, on the gap closer skill, which is uh, this one right here, position dash, then you want to use this. If not, if you don't have this, then you want to just skip this. Just take this out. Don't don't use it at all. So you only use it for gap closing. Then you just go death blow into brutal uh, precision. So, oh, brutal incision, sorry. And after brutal incision, you want to go with essential strike. But if you have this new skill right here, uh, guillotine blade, then you want to use guillotine blade instead. So this three skill right here is gonna be your biggest damage. This three skill right here is gonna be your biggest damage skill. Then you go with uh, Valiant Brawl and Gaia Crash. So this is basically your uh, main rotation. You want to use this at the start, or if you could, then if you could line out, then you want to use this as well. Um, well, I kind of explained this a little bit poorly, so I'm going to go through a VOD to show you like how I manage my skill cooldown. So I'm going to try to go as slow as possible as well. Alright, so in this case, I am doing a, uh, I don't know what you call this, the 1v1 thingy. Um, so I start off with Gaia Crash because it's the longest animation skill. I uh, So I, I just want to send this before I send my main rotation. So. Here we go, I use my main and then I use my gap closer because I don't have purple on my um this skill right here. Uh this skill. I don't have gap closer, so I'm using this to get close. So the first thing I did is uh I use the wheel breaker. Yep, right there. Boom. Then I use my stun. So he's stunned. And then I use my death blow already, it's instant cast super fast. And then I use my brutal incision. Boom. Right. Then I follow up with a quick little filler. So I'm gonna use this skill right here. So in this clip right here, I'm supposed to be using essential slash right after I did my brutal incision. But um I forgot to swap it out, so I just realized. <laughs> anyway. Then I will go with Valiant Brawl. And uh, yeah. But the thing about this is I forgot to use my uh, little buff right here. Uh, I could do my rotation like a little bit faster. But it's not really a big deal. Uh, I'm keeping this queue for later. Because this boss, like you have to defeat it twice. Um, that's why I didn't use it I guess. But yes, now... Now when everything is on cooldown, you want to just spam this skill right here. So this skill, uh, the fueler. As you can see, uh, my death blow and valiant bro is about to come up. Yeah, they are, they are, they have the same cooldown, but uh, my stun is still 19 seconds away. So when it's up, it's gonna be 15 seconds away. Now I'm gonna show you why in a minute. I'm. I'm gonna be using my um Valiant Bro with Death Blow without using the stun. The reason why I'm doing this is 
as you can see, death blow is 10.4 second cooldown. So let's have a look when it gets to when it's up. Okay, now my death blow is up, right? I'm just gonna use it. I'm just gonna use Valiant Bro into death blow because I still have 15 seconds. 15 seconds before I uh, my stun is go up. So I use death blow right here. Boom. Okay. Now they are almost lined up with the cooldown. So now I'm not gonna touch my brutal incision, which is this skill, one of your biggest damage skill. I'm not gonna touch it. I will do whatever the rotation and stuff. And also I use another Valiant Bro right there because it's it's got very low cooldown, 7.8 seconds, and it's also almost like a filler anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. And well, I dodge mechanic, do mechanic, whatnot. Okay, now my stun is up, so I just Literally just done, and then death blow straight away, brutal incision straight away, yep. And then just do whatever I could. Uh, now, I could use my wheel breaker to get damage first before I stun, death blow, and brutal incision. But you get the idea. I am prioritizing my death blow and brutal incision, your two biggest damage skill, uh, which is uh your death blow. This. Biggest damage skill and your brutal incision. This is your two biggest skill. So I always try to line up between that. So I want to make sure I use Will Breaker, which is this skill right here, to lower the enemy defense. Then I stun. Now, when I stun, so with this passive right here, every time I stun an enemy or shocked an enemy, my heavy attack chance went up by 180 which is basically 18 percent so i would have 18 percent chance to do double damage basically so if you see like i have like 2x that means the heavy attack is activated so that is pretty much it really oh yeah i also forgot there's this one skill right here that i did not change during this fight so if if you see this you just pretend it's uh ascension slash um yeah so let's go through this quickly again backstab if you have uh attack speed boost use it okay lower defense stun death blow into brutal incision and then into ascension slash and then you can do like whatever, um, Valiant Bro and Gaia Crush. And then on the second rotation, you can just use uh, Valiant Bro uh, into uh, Death Flow. Right there. Valiant Bro, Death Flow. So you line up the stun timer for the third rotation, which is your main rotation basically. So that is pretty much it. All right, now the passive. I'm going to show you real fast. Um, so the first one is going to be this right here. It gives you max HP and health regen. You want to get this to rare uh, if you could. Um, and then the second one is going to be your uh, vital force. This is very important. If you can get it to purple, then you know, you're going to get skill damage boost. Honestly, though. From what I've experienced, it's not really a huge of an upgrade to get this to purple, but this is like the only skill that you need to get to purple anyway, so get it to purple if you could. And this skill right here is very important. This cold warrior, because it gives you heavy attack chance. So if you could get this to purple, that would be fantastic. Now this is your one and only mana recovery skill. You you probably can just leave it as rare level one, or I guess if if you want to get a little bit more mana, then you can get it to purple. But it's gonna be expensive. Keep that keep that in mind. This is not that huge of a priority, so you don't need to really worry about this for two, for a while anyway. Now this one right here, whenever your enemy is poisoned, you get the crit hit. 
So if you can get this up to blue, and it's probably good enough to be honest. Um, it really depending on your armor, how much um crit you get from your armor, and all those kind of jars. So if your main uh, crit is only at about sixty percent on your base gear and everything, then you definitely want to get this up a little bit higher. But most of the case, I think you'll probably be at like eighty percent crit or something. Um, yeah. And this is a no-brainer, it just gives you crit damage and it's just really good, so. And this one, this this passive right here, uh, intimate armor, it just makes it a little bit tankier. Um, if you are farming mobs, then you want to use this along with this, because this one gives you uh, 70 base damage, uh, skill damage, if there's three more or more enemy nearby you. But... You don't really have to use this to be honest like most of the time you just 1v1 mobs and you kill them really fast and you move on to the next one but in terms of like group content then you want to use this one for like for example in open abyss you want to use this along with this skill the devastating tornado so you can you know you can spin to win um in open world abyss when um you have a teammate they can tank for you but that is pretty much it for uh, the passive now for the weapon, um, the first purple weapon you want to go for is definitely this weapon right here, Manic, Manic Duke Berserk Blade. You can get this weapon by simply doing your secret dungeon and um, you want to go with underground cave destruction because of this helmet right here. This helmet, if you have two piece of this set of gear, it gives you more me melee heavy attack chance. The reason why I'm telling you to grind this is because of this helmet. Me, myself, I've grinded this dungeon for like 20 times and I still have not gotten this helmet. So I kind of just gave up and swapped my class now. So yeah. So you want to grind this and uh, you get a lot of these dimensional crystal. If you, if you get really unlucky, um, it's only like 4% chance for this box to drop. So, if you do get lucky, you get this box drop, yeah, just go ahead and get this right here, Magna Duke Berserk Blade. It gives you made a heavy attack after you stun an enemy, so yeah, yeah this is basically best in slot, and it also, also gives you high attacks and also good cooldown reduction as well, which is really huge for, your, for this current build. Now, your offhand, um, you can go with this dagger but you want to make sure you are balancing out your melee crit and also your melee hit as well your melee hit should be staying at around like 70 to 80 percent because if your stun don't land you don't do you don't really do as much damage so actually i'm still not sure if you don't land your stun i don't know if the shock still applies to the boss but i'm not too sure about that but either way this is the bread and butter of how you can uh get this weapon well if you get really really unlucky you only get like weapon like this weapon right here or if you get this bracelet or the or even you know the cloak you can actually dismantle them if you get this weapon you can dismantle it for 12 dimensional crystal now this crystal right here you can you know you, you, if you have 40 of them you can make a box like this box right here and get your weapon that way um, you can craft this box in Stone Guard area, which is the map over here. Let me show you. Which is where I am at, I guess. Yeah, it's at the very bottom of the map. It's a Stone Guard at the bottom of the map. It's like this ca castle right here. So you just gotta go to one of these vendor and just try to craft there, I guess. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think I pretty much covered everything that you need to know. Um, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe and also check out my Twitch in the description. Uh, the link is in the de description. So, well, see you later. Peace.